DxO just released a major update to their incredible RAW enhancement tool, Pure RAW version 3. They claim it offers up to two and a half stops of additional noise reduction using its new Deep Prime XD method, enhanced detail and color, greater control to optimize your results, and more. In this video, we'll take a look at how well those claims hold up and how you can make the most of Pure RAW 3 to remove significant noise or make better prints. Let's start by comparing a couple of images I've already processed and then we'll do one from scratch. In the top row here, there are three versions of each RAW. The first one is derived from the original RAW. The second one uses the same settings, but it starts from Pure Raw version 2. And the third one uses the same settings again, but it starts from the newer Pure Raw version 3. Now I've already processed this image in a previous tutorial, which I'll link below in case you want to see it in detail. But let's just quickly compare the original Raw versus version 2, the older version. Let's see to compare, zoom in, and you can see very clearly that the original Raw is very noisy and lacking in detail. And what version two of Pure Raw is giving us is a much more usable, much more detailed, much cleaner version of the foreground. It's just really a better looking photograph in every way to me. So the question is, how much can version three improve? So let's compare version two versus version three. I'll hit C to compare again. We'll zoom in. And at first glance at the same level of detail, I can see a difference here, but you may not. So let's zoom in a little bit closer and now you can really start to see and appreciate the difference is in the level of noise. They claim two and a half stops of additional noise reduction using the latest version of Deep Prime XD is what they call their new method versus the old Deep Prime. So in version three here, you can see that the noise is virtually eliminated. This is an ISO 6400 image zoomed into 300%. If we go even closer, you know, here at 800%, you see there's really minimal noise Whereas even the cleaned up version out of version two shows quite a bit more noise. So if we just kind of zoom back a little bit here at like 200% and move around, you can see in every case, there's at least as much detail in the new version, but significantly less noise. It's a much more printable, much cleaner image, even compared to the previous version, which I think did a fantastic job. Now, if we go back and compare the original to version three, so if you never used Deep Prime, take a look at what we can get when compared these. So here's the original raw, I'll zoom back a little bit here. And here's what we're getting out of version three of Pure Raw. I mean, this has no forest detail and this is clearly showing some very usable detail, very printable detail. We're of course zoomed in very close so you can see it. But if this was a large print, then you would absolutely appreciate the quality of what you're getting here versus that original image. And I'm just thoroughly impressed at how much it improves this image. And the beauty of it is if we go back and just look at this one image, if I go into the develop module, I get to edit this just like any other image. So this is just a raw file that's been created by DxO's Deep Prime XD algorithm. So it's a DNG file. And I edit it the same way I would any other file with the exception that I may not need to go in and do lens corrections if I turn those on or sharpening and noise reduction. I might optionally do a little bit, but these are sort of taken care of for you in the raw. But otherwise, the image would use the same values and looks the same. So it's just a beautiful raw that is a significant improvement over the original raw. Now let's take a look at another example. So let's compare this arch image from the original to the older version two. We'll hit C to compare. Zoom in here. And you can see just like the previous image, the foreground is cleaned up very nicely. It's removed some noise and there's an improvement in detail. If we go back and compare version two to version three, let's see to compare, you can see that the new version has really made a beautiful stride forward. There's absolutely more detail here in this rock. I mean, take a look at what we have here. There's a kind of some ambiguity and there's a lot of noise. And on the right, there's almost no noise at all and clearly a much more detailed rock structure and I would absolutely be able to print this to a larger size using this version of the image than I can what I see on the left here. Now that said, as I look at the stars, I don't know that they've improved. I would actually say that the older version does a better job of not enhancing little distractions in the background. And so what I find myself doing is with the star fields, I'm going to use the older version, which is available in Pure Raw version three. You can still access it. And I just blend that sky in with the better foreground. So this is kind of the one area I found where it could improve. But aside from stars, I'm just generally finding things clean up much, much better with version three. I mean, look at all that noise. And on the right, there's just really no noise. 
much, much better detail. And if we go back and again, just compare the original RAW versus version three, there's just absolutely no contest at all here. I mean, take a look at how beautiful this image is versus on the left is just unusable garbage. You can reduce this noise in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. You're just not gonna match the level of what you see here. It's a beautiful result coming from their AI model. So clearly Pure Raw adds a lot of value for our noisy high ISO images. But what about a shot like this? I took this image at the base ISO 64. And so when you zoom in, you can see clearly it has a lot of detail and not a lot of noise. And yet still, it can improve on this quite a bit in ways that would really benefit my ability to make a large print. So I do want to process this image as well. And it doesn't matter that I've already edited the raw. I've made all these different slider adjustments. I've even added a bunch of local masks. So there's a lot of work done to this image and all of that will get transferred over. All I really need is some kind of a raw file, which can also include a DNG file, so long as it wasn't something you already processed, such as using like the merge to HDR feature in Lightroom. You can use that feature, but you need to use pure raw first. So to do this, we go up to file, plugin extras, and you can see I've got process with DxO pure raw three. Now, before we do this, let's just take a look at the old version. I've got that installed as well. So in pure raw two, the interface was really basic. You could turn on or off sharpening, and you can turn on or off lens distortion. Not a lot of options. Let's cancel that and take a look at the new interface. So go up to File, Plugin Extras, Process with DxO Pure Raw 3. In the new interface, we have a new version called Deep Prime XD, and this is the one you want to use nearly all the time, unless you have a situation like those stars where perhaps the older version works a little bit better. But for the most part, that's what you want to use. And then in the corrections, you can see we have quite a few more options. Instead of just turning on or off the sharpening, we can now choose the degree of sharpening we apply. And then we can turn on or off the ability to do vignetting and chromatic aberration. And under lens distortion, we have multiple different options. So we can choose to keep just something which is proportional to the current image we have. So keep the overall aspect ratio, the three by two. We can keep a little bit more, so it'll change the aspect ratio, but it keeps more pixels. Or we can choose to keep everything, including blank areas where some pixels are available and some are not. And you could use this with something like content aware fill if you really want to expand the size of your image and use the lens distortion. Now with these various options here, I'm generally going to turn off vignetting since it works very well in raw and I can choose the percentage. So I like just keeping that flexibility. I'm almost always going to keep on the chromatic aberration because I find it works better here than it does on the same file later in um, the Lightroom or Adobe Camera interface. The lens distortion, I would leave that off if you're going to compare to the original or merge with the original, which we're going to do. But if you're going to go directly to some other output, it can be very nice. And then in the lens softness, I generally turn off or to standard, but if standard isn't quite right, of course you can dial it up or down. So let's just start with the standard softness. So these are all the controls down below. We want to make sure we choose a DNG. That's going to be our raw output. We definitely don't want a JPEG or TIFF. I like to output as a subfolder of the current one. And the file renaming I find very handy because I want to go and name the file to remind myself what settings I chose above. So I've got chromatic aberration and standard lens softness. So you can see I've got CA lens standard. So that clearly marks that. I think I'm good to go. So I'm going to start processing. And I just have one image here, but we could have sent over 20 or 100 images and it would batch process all of them at the same time. And then when that's done, you won't immediately see the new file. It just, there's like a 10 second lag and then all of a sudden Lightroom sort of notices that something happened and it'll import it for you automatically. If that doesn't happen, you can right click and synchronize your folder to force it, but you really just need to wait about 10 seconds and it'll happen for you automatically. So you can see that's starting to get imported and it's showing me the new image and I can see in the file name the way I've named it here. Let's go back so we can compare things back to the library and I need to show my folder so we can go back and look at both. So here is my original, here's my new output. I'm gonna mark this in green. Let's go and select both of them and hit C to compare. So on the left is my original raw, on the right is the new version from Deep Prime using our chromatic aberration and standard lens sharpening. So let's zoom in and you can see very clearly on the left here, there is some degree of visible noise and on the right, there's really none. It's just totally removed it. And the overall level of detail has been significantly improved. This would be much more principle for me to very large sizes. I'm not going to notice this on social media, but if I'm making big prints, 
then I would really appreciate this higher quality output. I mean, take a look at, for example, zooming in here, there is definitely some noise in the original image. It's subtle, but it's gone in the new version. Or if we go around looking at some of the other rock faces here, it just very clearly is a better image on the right. And that may be a little subtle when you're looking on YouTube, but I could absolutely print this image 10, 20, maybe even 30% larger with the cleanup that I have here. And it really takes me almost no time at all to make that improvement. And even better, I can combine this output with Gigapixel over in Photoshop to make even larger prints. So to learn more about making large prints with Topaz Gigapixel, now click on this next video.